as we continue to take a look at substitution, we're going to take a look specifically with inverse trigonometric functions, answering the question, how do we take integrals resulting in the inverse trig functions? And we'll start off with some formulas that we're going to work with. And what you'll find is these formulas really are the inverse trig derivatives written in reverse, because the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that the derivative of the integral is the function itself. So if I wanted to integrate du over the square root of, let's call it a squared minus u squared, you should recognize that from the sine inverse function of u over a plus c. If I wanted to take the integral du over a squared plus u squared, that should look familiar as the tangent inverse function. But we have to do a little bit of manipulation to it first. For the tangent inverse, we're going to do 1 over a tangent inverse of u over a plus c. And the third formula we're going to recognize is the integral du over the absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus a squared. And that one, similar to tangent, we'll have to do a divide by a to get rid of that a issue. And then we'll have the secant inverse of the u over a plus a constant. We are still missing three of the inverse trig formulas. But if you remember with the derivatives of the inverse cosine, inverse cotangent, and the inverse cosecant, they're the exact same formulas with just a negative sign which means we don't really need another formula with integration because that negative sign can come outside of the integral, and then it becomes one of these three formulas. So that reduces the amount of things we have to keep track of, which is quite nice. Let's take a look at how we can use these three formulas then to do some examples. Starting with taking the integral dx over 36 plus 4x squared. Now, noticing in the denominator we've got two perfect squares added together, that looks a lot like that second formula, the tangent formula. So let's see. We just need to identify what a and u are, and that u kind of hints at what we want to make our substitution. Because we'd like to see just u squared, but we have 4x squared. So we're going to do a u substitution where we want the u squared to be 4x squared. Well, if u squared is 4x squared, taking the square root, u is just 2x, and its derivative is just 2dx. So to make the substitution work, we'll multiply by 2 inside and 1 half outside. And now we've got the u of 2x, or 4x squared being u squared. And the 2dx becomes our du. And our new integral is now 1 half times du over 36 plus u squared. In fact, we can even rewrite that 36 as 6 squared so that it's in that tangent format. So to begin with, as we take this integral, we've got the 1 half out front times, using our tangent formula, tangent says we're going to take 1 over the a term. So 1 over 6 tangent inverse of u divided by the a term of 6 plus a constant. Now going back and putting that u in, 
we'll end up with our final answer, multiplying the fractions to get 1 12th tangent inverse of u, which is 2x, divided by 6 plus c. Well, actually, not quite final answer, because we can reduce that 2 over 6 to get 3. So for our final answer, we'll say 1 12th tangent inverse of x over 3 plus c is our antiderivative. Let's try another one. Let's try one that's a little different. Let's do the integral of secant inverse of t over the absolute value of t times the square root of 1 minus t squared dt. What you might notice here is we seem to have this inside function that's throwing off everything else. So let's call that inside function of secant inverse, let's call that our u. u is secant inverse. And then we can calculate our du, which is the derivative of secant inverse, which you remember is dt divided by the absolute value of t times the square root of 1 minus t squared. And fortunately, all of that already sits in my function. So this is going to clean up really nicely. The secant inverse of t becomes just u. And the dt over the absolute value of t minus the square root, or times the square root, becomes our du. And this is a very easy integral to take. We end up with u squared divided by 2 plus our constant or substituting back that u, the secant inverse of t squared divided by 2 plus our constant. Let's do one last problem as we wrap up these inverse trigs integrals. Let's do a definite integral. Let's take a definite interval from 1 third to the square root of 3 over 3 of dx over the square root of 4 minus 9x squared. In a way, this is very similar to our first problem. We want to have subtracting u squared. And if we are subtracting u squared, that becomes the sine formula subtracting u squared. So let's use that to help with our substitution. We'll make the u squared equal to 9x squared. Therefore, u is the square root, just 3x. And du, the derivative, is 3dx. So multiply by 3 and 1 third. Also, we're going to multiply the limits of integration by 3 as we set this up. Keeping my highlighting in check here, we've got the u is 3x. The du is 3dx. So what we end up with is 1 third times the integral. We're going to multiply the limits by 3. 1 third times 3 is 1. Root 3 over 3 times 3 is the square root of 3. 3dx becomes our du over the square root of 4 minus u squared. So we end up with 1 third times, this is the sine inverse of u over 2, because we divide by whatever squared, whatever that a squared is, a squared, 2 squared is 4, integrated from 1 to the square root of 3. So we end up with 1 third times the sine inverse of root 3 over 2 minus the sine inverse of 1 over 2. 
So we have 1 third times. Remember our unit circle. Sine is the y coordinate. That's root 3 over 2 at pi over 3. Minus sine the y coordinate is 1 half at pi over 6. So we end up with 1 third times pi over 3 when we subtract, or pi over 9 is the area under our curve between 1 third and square root of 3 over 3. So we've got three new formulas today, the sine inverse, tangent inverse, and secant inverse results. Those three formulas are what we're going to be using, still working with our substitution strategies as we take integrals that result in inverse trig functions. Try some of these. We'll talk about them more in class and answer any questions you might have. Good luck.